Today's episode is with one of my absolute favorite people. It's Eric Perner. He's the owner of Rep Provisions and a rancher out in Oklahoma. He's not just any rancher. He is a regenerative rancher and he does such a good job educating on this topic. It is one of the most important things in health to me is regenerative agriculture. Um, so I'm going to let him explain to you why it matters so much. I'll just say, please consider Please consider what the food you are choosing to eat is doing to the planet, to the people, to the animals, like working together as a whole. That's what regenerative agriculture is all about. It is very heart-based, very connected, um, and it matters. It matters for us. It matters for the, the future of the planet. It matters for people that are going to come on this planet after us. It matters a lot. So I want him to come on and educate you guys today. Uh, make sure, please, please buy your meat from them. It comes right to your doorstep. It's not even that expensive. Like very often, just the regular grass-fed stuff at the grocery store will cost more. And this is so much more than grass-fed. It's not just grass-fed. It's so much more than that. They're re restoring the topsoils, replenishing the topsoils, saving ecosystems. It's, it's so much more than just grass-fed meat. So um, you can use my coupon code uh, if, if that helps. It's Coach Tara. It's 15% off with them. But... Also, you could just pay full price and just support, vote with Yadala. <laughs> so, but it, you know, don't, don't, no shame in using the coupon code if you want to get 15% off. It's coach chair at repprovisions.com. But yeah, please listen to this episode. Please share it with people. This is such an important message. We'll go ahead and jump in. Here is Eric Perner. Okay. So guys, I, I just told Eric, I was like, I have to get you back on the show because it's been like a couple years. And I'm like, we need, I want to make sure anybody who has not, had the delight of being introduced to what regenerative agriculture is. I wanted to put that in you guys' faces. So I was like, Eric, can you please come back? Cause, cause you're like, what, what are you called? Like a savory Institute, like educational hub or something like that. Right. Like you help educate other people on regenerative agriculture. Am I getting that right? Yes. Yeah. No, yeah. that's exactly all right. So we're a, a hub branch for the savory Institute out of Boulder, Colorado. And we're really trying to use, you know, their their methods of how they are defining regenerative on farms and ranches. And the goal is for us to grow not just our hub, but all as many surrounding ranches as possible yeah. to kind of get in there, what they call right. management. So and yeah, that, so you're really like where, yeah, where rep provisions comes in as well to be that outlet for the supply chain. And we think that's how that can help scale regenerative farming and ranching. Okay. Awesome. So you guys are getting like, like one of the educators on regenerative. I kind of wanted to set that scene, you know, so they understand that this is part of the work that you're doing. And the first thing I just, I want to get right into it. Cause I, I've noticed that a lot of people are kind of like, they understand grass fed, right. They understand mm -hmm. like organic or grass fed, but they like, so I, I find it very uncommon for someone to understand about like the soil, what regenerative that like buying regenerative, from regenerative ranches, it's not really just about the quality of meat, although it's freaking amazing. And you've got some lab testing on it and we can get into that. And it's just the taste you can tell. And like, yes, that is part of it, but it's so much more than just grass fed meat. It is about the soil. So can you explain in your, I mean, I guess this is what you do, for, you know, a big thing you do, like what regenerative, why it matters to get meat from a regenerative ranch. Yeah. It, so just to kind of how I would define regenerative farming and ranching or regenerative agriculture, it's really about restoring these cycles of nature, right? Yeah, because right. I think a lot of these cycles in nature are just broken with conventional mm -hmm. agriculture methods. And mm -hmm. one of those cycles would be the carbon cycle. Yeah. And so this is how carbon, you know, um, uh, cycles through, you know, all the living beings and through the atmosphere and things of that nature. And really, you know, the carbon includes every living being on earth. And there's a big push now to kind of, you know, we think we've messed this cycle up and that we have excess carbon in our atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is coming from our poor practices in agriculture, which um, have carbon in the soil, which creates really healthy, um, great soil that um, that is then being released in the atmosphere. So really regenerative farm and ranching, when it comes to repairing that carbon cycle, you're creating more um, living beings over time. And that process um, 
uh, creates more life, it stores more carbon, it creates um, um, this, this cycle that gets repaired that we're really looking to do with regenerative farming and ranching. And, and when you think of monocropping, it's fundamentally based on creating less life. So it selectively kills everything yeah. except that one crop where regenerative food systems are creating more life above ground and below ground. So it's, that's really kind of the whole kind of it in a nutshell, but it's just creating more life and that really repairs that carbon cycle. Yeah. I'll never forget. We did a kind of a regenerative awareness event out at your ranch and it was so amazing. This one was that 2020? It was, yeah, 2020, 2020, yeah. 21 maybe. I can't remember, but. I can't remember. It was, <laughs> yeah, 2021. I yeah. Think. Yeah. And that was so powerful. And I'll never forget the moment where like we were out on our little tour bus and you're on the microphone and we're driving past one of your neighbors and there's, and you're like, I love these guys. I mean, no offense, you know, but it was just this grass as far as you can see, it's just what Bermuda grass or something and it's yeah. nice fence. And, and you were like, a lot of people see this as like, oh, wow, that's really beautiful. And you were like, that looks like the Sahara desert to me. So let's like, let's talk about that a little bit, you know, like what happened. So like when we look at a, the reason we did the event because I wanted people to see it because you go on your ranch and it's wild. Like these cattle are walking at one point I saw them walking around in grasses that were taller than them, you know? And they like, I, I was like, I don't think this is just in my mind. Those cows literally look happier. They're like wagging their tails. They're jumping across the grasses. <laughs> like I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. So like, um, in terms of helping people kind of get a, a visual, idea of like what you're talking about with this storing the nature cycles. It's like, okay, so we have monocrops or even like grass as a monocrop, like what happens in terms of like the soil, the wildlife, you know, and, and the water, the, you know, all of that versus just let yours. I mean, basically you guys are like, we're just letting things grow. We're just honoring nature, how it works. Right. So can you kind of go into that a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. And kind of real quick to touch on that. A lot of people think we need to remove grazing animals from our food system. Yeah. Like this is a big proponent of right. the vegan movement. Say animals are bad. We have right. all the data, you know, they release methane and they're, and they're bad for an ecosystem. But, you know, um, I think that is going to create an ecological disaster and it's based. And here's why, because across the world, grasslands and grazing animals co-evolve together. Mm-hmm. And we're real passionate about restoring grasslands. And, and I got to, I got need to define that a little better. So when I say grasslands, I'm really talking about these native perennial grasslands that you saw that grow mm-hmm. really tall. And that's only part of the story. You're not seeing how deep yeah. those roots go below the soil. So yeah. that's what I'm talking about when we're creating more life. So we're really passionate about restoring those native perennial grasslands. Mm-hmm. Now it is true that improperly grazed grasses can become unhealthy, but that's just part of the story. Um, Also, idle grasslands untouched, and I think I showed you that here, also degrade too. So uh, whereas properly grazed um, grasslands become healthier and they create more life and restore that carbon cycle I just talked about. So um, in addition to that, you know, well-managed grasslands really create crucial ecosystem services you know we talked about storing more carbon they produce more oxygen they filter and store more water they're home to thousands of different species from grassland birds to insects to pollinators and when they're grazed properly they also convert that cellulose from the plant matter that we can't eat to nutrient dense proteins so that that's what i that's the kind of food system i envision as being the healthiest for the land healthiest for the soil and the healthiest for us And I think all that kind of transfers through that animal's body into our bodies as well. Um, And I think there's just a lot of misunderstandings that Mm -hmm. that encourage us to ignore how important our grasslands are. Um, And so we created this more chemically dependent food system that's really teeters on the edge of disaster. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really what we're trying to get back to creating these natural cycles, Mm -hmm. doing it. Yes, organically, but regeneratively is really the key, what we want to live by. 
Yeah. You made this awesome. Like the moment we, you said like the day we decided to do that event, you went out in your land and you created this simulation of just letting things grow how they do and how you would do things. And then you planted, which was probably killed you, but it was for a good effort, a good yes. reason, a row crop of corn with bare soil underneath. And then you created a water, you know, simulated rainfall on it. And that I wanted to talk on that because I think that this is the piece when when people are like, uh, animals are destroying, you know, everyone should only eat plants. And I'm like, I'm not saying this. And like, I, I don't want to ever be in a offensive or rude or, you know, I'm right. You're wrong. Or I, I just want to share this perspective. Cause I, I just find that I don't know if a lot of people who think that we should all only eat plants, like realize this peacefully, you know? And so if you're going to only eat plant, if everyone's only going to eat plants, right? Like everybody, the whole planet, which, you know, Rob Wolf in his book, sacred cow talks about how two thirds of the land mass on the, in the entire world is only suitable for grazing animals. If you can't grow food well there, so there's that, but then, so we're going to take the whole world population and everyone's only going to eat, you know, plants that they're, most of them are getting from the grocery store, which are going to come from row crops, meaning just like you guys all see, there's the da- bare soil. It's these neat little rows. And let's talk about the water and the heat, like why that's a problem and how regenerative is doing it differently. Yeah. Like as, as I kind of showed on that little experiment demo, when you were here, um, when you, uh, uh, when you have these row crops of corn, they're very susceptible to water erosion and wind erosion because there is lots of bare soil between that rows of corn, which, um, you know, leaves that soil very susceptible to water erosion, wind erosion. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and so I think when we did that experiment, we saw within minutes, water was just rolling off of that bare, that soil in between the row crops of corn. But then on the other side, where we had this kind of simulated native prairie, we watered it for hours, Hours. never saw any run. It's different. So, you know, when you think about what's happening um, underground where you have this tremendous root structure of all these native perennial plants, just sucking that water up and holding it, locking it away Mm -hmm. to use it in times of a drought where corn, it just barely, you know, infiltrating the surface and then it's starting to run off. So that creates a system where they got to overwater and continually water, or they have to have water, you know, continuously. And, um, that's washing away a lot of the nutrients. So then they got to fertilize it and the herbicides and the pesticides that they've got to use on it. So it creates a really fragile, food system where yeah. I think regenerative is be creating this really resilient food system that can withstand yeah. drought that can withstand right. all these hardships that sometimes it gets, um, you know, that come around. So I think that's kind of the whole goal of, of regenerative is, is different than monocropping. Right. You know, as we talk about creating more life creates more resiliency. And can you talk about how animals play a role in that? Yeah. Um, well, in terms of, of grasslands, they're really, like I said, grasslands that co-evolved with animals and they're part of stimulating that growth of those plants. So when they graze and they, they defecate and they urinate, they kind of fertilize it. They move on, they open up the sunlight to reach that plant again and grow back, you know, quicker and, and, and stronger. Now it's really the properly grazing of it that matters though. It's not just the grazing, it's the properly grazing. So after it's been grazed, after they fertilize it, then they need to move on and offer the proper recovery. This is where we tend to get in a problem with grazing animals on land. We're not managing them in a way where it offers that proper recovery of those grasslands once they once they've been grazed. So we're just trying to simulate these natural methods mm-hmm. of, for example, when bison bison used to roam the prairies. They mm-hmm. roamed in massive, massive herds, but the thing is they kept roaming and they kept moving on to new pasture. And that really offered the recovery behind them to, mm-hmm. to stimulate those grasslands to come back stronger and better. Yeah. You're just mimicking nature there. And I love, you know, you bring up the word management a lot. And if you guys want to learn more about this, like Alan Savory's book, holistic management is so profound. It is so good, but that's the word is like, it's about management and it, it makes me think of the body, you know, the body's nature too. It's all the same thing. And it's like, if you uh, just completely neglect it, 
you never give it any nutrients or hardly, you know, it's just, it's going to suffer. Like it has to be managed well. And that's how, that's where you guys come in. That's where we come in is like, Hey, let's be good stewards. Let's take care of it. Let's, you know, like be mindful and watch over and make sure it has what it needs. Appreciate like, that's how I'm with my body. I appreciate all that it does. Like, I don't know how it's auto regenerating my cells. Like, thanks body. That's really cool. You know, and like, you know, you know, you're, the plants are regenerating this a bit, but, but it's like, let me make sure that you have what you need, the right environment that you need. Oh, okay. You can't work out for 24 hours straight that. Yeah. Okay. That would be a little too much. And that's how you guys are treating the land. It's just this loving stewardship of, I see you and I appreciate you and I'm listening to you and I see what you need and I, and I got you and I'm going to help, you know, make sure that you have what you need, that you can regenerate, you know, it's, it's, it's a beautiful yes. relationship with the land. It is. I mean, I have such a great respect, like you said, for, for life in general. I mean, just mm -hmm. given this amazing thing, let's, let's take care of it, you know, as best we can and um, regenerate it and really you know, you talked about, you know, you know, the, the part of, I think the issue in food as well is this loss of nutrients in our food. Yeah. Like there's just, it's we're bad. not cycling nutrients properly. And right. I think that's what regenerative aims to repair. So yeah. if that soil's healthier and it has more nutrients and those plants are able to pull up those nutrients deep underground, transfer to the, that to the plant and then that to the animal, that's right. naturally going to end up in our bodies. And why is you know, all these vitamin and minerals that we, you know, people feel the need to take. Why is that? Yeah. Like, this wasn't, this is because not, you know, humans did soil. not have to do this previously. So right. what is going on? Right. Why do they feel the need to have to take all these? And, and it's because, you know, our food is not as nutritious as it used to be. And right. it's part of, like I said, breaking these cycles in nature, one of them being this mineral cycle that is not leading to the best health for our body. So that's kind of another piece, which we aim to repair. Yeah. That's why like, like on social media and stuff, I'm like, guys, like, I, I don't know how to, I don't want to get all into it right now, but like, please buy regenerative stuff. Like it's, it's so much more. That's the thing is like, it's so much more than just like about you. I say, I would like to say it's self selfish, because, you know, you're getting really high quality nutrient dense stuff for yourself and it's selfless. Cause it's like so good for the planet, the entire system, you know, like it's we're Cause like in my mind, I, I see if we continue down this path of, you know, the, the mono crops, the fake stuff, the processed foods, the depleted soils we're losing, we haven't gotten into the, we're losing topsoil, like all of that, like human health, yeah, I take supplements because I know full well, even if I'm eating organic stuff, it's from the grocery store. It, it I don't, I'm not getting the nutrient density right. out of those plants that we got. That's well documented. That's not a theoretical idea. You guys can Google it. It'll be like the first thing that comes up, you know? And so right. it's like, we have to, we, the people have to sit, vote with, for what we want, where the, where the money goes, where the interest goes, that's how the, the world will shift in that direction. If everybody stops buying the KFO meat, and I know that some people have to buy that or feel like that, you know, they're in a place where it's just financially, it's like they can barely afford that. I get it. Although yeah. I think your guys' stuff is very, extremely affordable <laughs> for, especially for like, I've seen your operation. I'm like, wow, like there's so much love and, and just, attention and effort going into that. Like, it's like unbelievably affordable and comes right to your door, you know, it's yeah. like, wow. So, but like, if we can, if you at all can start to, sh if we can shift our finances to like, that's to me, I don't really see my voting power, very powerful. I live in Republican Utah. It's just, I know how it's always going to go one way, you know? Right, right. Um, <laughs> but like, I see my, my greatest voting power with what I choose, what I choose to like, it's like, that's how I feel when I'm like, I can't, I cannot bring myself to buy that meat anymore. It's not, not in like a, a judgmental way or anything, or, you know, want anyone to feel bad. It's just me personally. I'm like, I can't vote for that, man. Like every, if I buy that, I'm voting for that. I can't vote for yeah. that. Like in my heart, I just can't, you know? And so it's really big. And I, real quick side note, I did want to hit on like the water, the, the soil weight that we're losing. Like, can we talk about that whole thing? Yeah. Like I mentioned, you know, because of a lot of these monocropping or even improperly grazed um, grasslands that, you know, it's estimated we're losing about 75 billion tons of topsoil every year. Mm -hmm. That's probably an underestimate to be quite honest. And so 
you know, topsoil, which takes quite some time to build itself back. I mean, that's hugely risky. I mean, what do we yeah. do? I mean, we're, <laughs> we're on this little thin layer across this, you know, giant rock of a planet that sustains all life. So mm -hmm. I think it's very important. We protect it, but not only protect it, but let's make it healthier. Yeah. You know, I think that's part of our motto. So yes, we are losing topsoil at a high rate. Um, and so if you draw that out over time, that's, that doesn't look pretty. So I think that the methods we've got to improve in agriculture to help restore that, um, to help preserve that topsoil, because once yeah. that's out, you know, then what? You right. Know? And that, that's my personal biggest beef with like the fake meat craze yeah. that's gone on. It's not, right. I don't have anything. I eat plants. I don't have anything against that. Or, you know, the, the idea of eating a black bean burger or something like that. Mm. It's not about, I'm not even that concerned with like the fillers and the stuff like that. Like it's, it's, that is not even close to my biggest concern. My yes. biggest concern is that it is supporting monocrops in this yes. whole thing that you just described right. is so yes. taxing on our planet. It's like making everything harder. We're losing topsoil. We got to use more water. We got to add more nutrient. Like it's serving that it's, it's, it's just in my personal opinion, it's destroying the planet at a rapid rate. And that's my problem with it. That's my fear too. Like yeah. if you keep promoting, you know, this, this plant-based system, how do you supply the world's right. food? It's through monocropping right now. Right. So that's super scary. And, you know, the other thing, if you're, if you're, you know, if your heart, if you want to be vegan, because you're, you, you want to do it for the animals, look what a monocrop system does. Yeah. It wipes out all life except that one plant and it's selectively killing many more animals then it's, it's, you know, then even a regenerative um, farm, right. you know, so you've got to keep that in consideration. What about right. all the wildlife? What about, you know, right. all, all the, all the insects and the, and the small creatures that live in these grasslands that is completely wiped out. Right. So um, right. If, if that's your, if, you know, if that's your problem with it, with um, eating meat, you know, consider what you are eating and how damaging it can be to, to life as well. Well, and I have even a really interesting perspective. I went up to um, Farmer Lee Jones Farm up in Ohio. Do you know yeah. those guys? I, um, I so they have a regenerative farm, right? So they have plants that they grow regeneratively. And it's been a process for them. You know, they kind of like stumbled across regenerative uh, just purely with the intention of they wanted better tasting plants because they used to supply only to chefs. And they, so it, it was so it's just as they pursued taste they found health, you know, and they test yeah. the mineral content content of their plants on site. They have a lab there and it's really cool, you know? And, um, one of the things I, the, uh, woman who is like their health person that was taking me around, she's just said this thing that really hit me. She's like, when you spend enough time with the plants, you reckon that you really deeply understand that they are also alive. And so she's like, just to me, it's kind of silly. Um, when people are, like they don't want to kill an animal. Cause it's like, you realize the plants are alive too. And they're dying for you to eat them. And she's like, I just don't yeah. think people realize that at the level that we do, because we have yeah. like relationships with these plants, you know? Yeah. So I'm just offering yeah. that up too. like, she, she said it in such a like loving way, but like, I just thought the perspective was really, you know, helpful. Cause I yeah. do think one of the things that I, I, I think I've told you this before, but I'm like, I've never killed an animal. I have never That's hunted. It. Right. And I'm like, even though I don't really want to do that. Right. Cause my little like inner five-year-old is like, no, but I'm like, yes. Tara, but you eat them though. So yes. like, I do feel like part of that would be good for me in a way of like appreciation of what's happening. And I think this is kind of what happened. Like you live in Oklahoma, like you grew up in this life, like very normal, you know, but a lot of us grew up in some suburban neighborhood watching Saturday morning cartoons. We never had chickens. We never had anything like that. Ever. All the animals you know, we, talk and have personalities. And... We're, yeah. <laughs> it's like not, not exposed to that at all. And so I've noticed, like, I remember I, this is embarrassing, but this is where I was. I used to not like to eat chicken that had bones in it because I didn't want to remember that it was an animal when I was a little kid, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And I look at that now and I'm like, that, but that's kind of common, you know, like you hear that. And I'm like, that, that's a big part of the issue. I feel like in like the emotional side of not wanting to eat meat is that like, we grew up in like a pound of hamburger and a box of Cheez-Its were almost like the same thing. 
they were both just like these packages that you get. We're so disconnected from yeah. our food, like so disconnected. We don't uh-huh. know where anything comes from. And we, you know, obviously, you know, we, we turn all animals into pets and that, you know, these sentient beings that, you know, we need to protect. And it's just like, that's not what nature is. Nature is life, death right. and regeneration. That's right. how it works. So right. it's part of this cycle. And Mm-hmm. You know, it's my belief that humans really, you know, if, if, you know, if you believe in, in, in evolution that I think our bodies evolved on eating meat and probably yeah. large, possibly large quantities. I mean, that's, right. you know, it's, it's, it's kind of where we came from. In my opinion, we were hunters gatherers. So we ate, you know, a combination of things. Yes. But meat was a central part of the diet potentially for many hundreds of thousands of years. So how can we just forget about it? You know, right. Where right. we came from, that's how our bodies evolved. Right. So it's critical, you know, that we remember that. Yeah. What is it like for you? Like you're out with the, your cattle all day, every day, you know, when you eat your own meat, you know, like just tell me what's your mindset around, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you gotta, you've got to understand that when I, take an animal in for processing, you know, it's, there's a little part of me that gets sad. I don't, you know, it's yeah. not like it's comfortable. I don't like to do, I don't, you know, that's, it's, yeah. it's kind of hard sometimes because you get connected to them, but right. I also know about what that animal is giving back. Yeah. Like what it gave back to the land, what it's giving back to my body and my family. And it's almost like you, you kind of just, it's this sacred thing really for yeah. me. And, um, I, you know, what, in return, I gave that animal a great life for three, four or five years. Yeah. And in return, it's supplying all these great outcomes and yeah, it's gratitude. I, yeah. It's gratitude. It really comes yeah. from the heart for me. It's really yeah. gratitude for that animal. And I'm trying to think, you know, if I was, if I had this ability to give back to the natural world, the way that cow can, and then provide this family with all these exactly. nutrients. What a great way to go out. What an exactly. awesome life to give back that way. I how know that's that if all of us could give back that at the end of our lives. Right. That's how so I feel. It's kind I'm of like, a sacred thing for me. Yeah. I'm like, I really, really hope that I die in a way that a bunch of my organs can like give life to somebody else who gets yeah. a, a you young know, kid cool that's got that cancer. Be? Like that would be so awesome. I would, yes. that would make me so happy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's kind they, of like that. Yeah, they live amazing lives. And, you know, the main thing I'm a big proponent, you know, too many people are dismissive of that, that end of life for that particular animal. I'm a very much um, kind of want to honor that. I don't want to yeah. be disrespectful of it. I want it to be done in a way that is mm. as kind and gently as possible. So mm-hmm. for example, when we take beef in, it gets up out of pasture. It goes to the processor less than an hour away from here. And then it's, wow. it's killed and then it's hanging on the hook. So it's very quick. There's very yeah. little stress. Right. And if you contrast that with very large CAFOs, there's a whole different set of processes that happen up till the end of the life of that animal. And yes, it comes from a farmer initially, then it mm-hmm. goes to a livestock yard where it's auctioned off. And then it goes oh, to wow. a feedlot for 120 days in cramped conditions, fed a a, a not a species appropriate diet for it. So it tends to get sick. So that's got to be treated. So that goes on for many months, not in its natural environment, and then hauled to a processor where it might stand in line for who knows how many hours yeah. before it's actually killed and hang on hook. So it goes through all these stressors right. until the end of its life. To me, that's just not, that's the not best way to honor that animal. No. You know, so yeah. And I know, I know that's where we're at. I know that's where the majority yeah. of our beef comes from. And I understand that. And it does have some, some positives for, for, right. you know, feeding a nation, but I'm like, right. gosh, there's gotta be better ways. I mean, mm-hmm. how do we scale what we're doing here? How do we make that the system? That's the standard exactly. not the CAFO system. And there's lots of controversy about how that can be done, but you know, we're, 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 we're trying to start it here. And yep. sh- kind of show that concept on a small scale. And hopefully that can, that can scale bigger across the nation. Yeah. It's you're reminding me of kind of like where I'm at with like the medical Western medical system. It's kind of like, listen, there's things I appreciate, you know, I see those yeah. things, but like, and I'm not going to try to change the system. It's just, it's way too, it's just a, it's a fighting energy that I never feel find is a, aligned or healthy. Yes. It's like, let's just, 
just focus on this healthier system. And then like more and more people will gravitate to that because it's more yes. aligned and works better. And like that. And so that's why I'm always, that's one of the main reasons I'm encouraging people to get their meat from you is because it's that, that's what I mean. It's so much more than just like buying good quality meat. It's like we're trying to shift away from this system that is not aligned. It is not healthy for the planet. It's not healthy for the animals. It's not as healthy for us. Like it's just, and it's very taxing. It's demanding. It's, you know, it's just, it's an unhealthy system. I mean, it's a, it's a disaster to try to like fight it, change it, like just mm -hmm. create a new system, which is what you guys are doing, you know? And so it's like, yes. when, when we can support the healthier system, when more of us support the healthier system, the old one just starts to die eventually, you know? And that's, right. that's how I see it. That's, that's how I see it. Me as Tara, who lives in suburban Utah, that is all I can do is just yes. support the healthier system, you know? And I think yes. about this with my cleaning products. Like I get on EWG and see if stuff is verified or you can type in Amazon EWG verified, like, yes. you know, cleaning spray or, you know, laundry soap or whatever. And so it's just my little way of like, it's like, what am I, what am I supporting, you know? And I still, I'm sure I still have more, like sometimes I think about my clothes and I'm like, I need to start <laughs> thinking about where I get my clothes more, you know? Like, what I am know. I supporting, you know? And so- yeah just little steps, but like, I'm grateful that I found you guys that, cause you're, you're, you're doing that's I'm like, I don't want to, I told you, I'm like, I don't want to be a rancher. I love ranchers because yeah. they're still connected to the land. And like, I don't want to do that though. Like I have my own role to play with, you know, helping people get healthy and this stuff. And so thank you for doing that one. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> amazing, you know, like I support uh, yeah. you. <laughs> right. I appreciate that. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, and it, that's one thing's for sure. The consumer can shift things probably quicker than any government or yeah. anything else can. Because like yep. once they start demanding these types of products, then you know people start getting on board. And like you said, you just you just kind of steer the system towards this better, yeah, better out, outcomes. And I think right. that's the way is the consumer can have a huge impact on that of moving it faster. Let's talk about, um, despite the fact that you can kind of just tell this intuitively because your meat and your chicken and your pork, everything tastes so amazing. <laughs> like you can just tell the quality. It's actually, I will say you've kind of ruined restaurant meat for me. Like, I'm sure you've put, been in this. It's like a bird. For a bird. Yeah. I'm like, oh no, dude, like this is. I can tell this is not that, you know, it's just like, thank you for ruining restaurant meat for me. But, Thanks. um, uh, let's talk, you've had some independent lab testing done on your beef since our last interview. Can you share about yes. that? Yeah. So I think, you know, part of the, what people criticize beef on red meat in general yeah, is the, the fat content in mm -hmm. red meat. Mm-hmm. And so there's this whole kind of debate, and I don't really know where you stand about, you know, omega, um, omega 3s versus omega 6s, and that our current diet based on a lot of monocrops and feeding animals a high corn diet shifts this thing, you know, known as an omega 6 to omega 3 ratio to a really high level. So, in other words, we're getting an outsized portion of omega 6 fats in our body. Mm -hmm. um, when, when we eat all these processed foods and meats that are come from feedlot. Yeah. And so, and, and I start to think about that and, um, it kind of makes sense. I mean, to me, mm -hmm. I mean, when you think of, you know, the USDA came out with their food pyramid in the eighties, which was what it was a low fat, high carb diet, which tends to shift us towards higher omega six. Yep ratios. And I arguably, you can say that our health outcomes have gotten way worse exactly. you know, since that time. Yeah. And, but anyway, part of that was, you know, eliminate red meat because it's high in saturated fat. But I started diving into those details and looking at the fats in red meat and, um, and looking at this omega six to omega three ratio. And yet, when you look at grain fed beef, you know, coming from these feedlots, that omega six to three ratio is quite high. It might be 10 to one, 12 to one. So it, it's quite high. But when I look at an, at a, a, a beef that's hundred percent grass fed and grass finished, it's way lower. And in fact, probably the perfect ratio, what humans bodies evolved on was a one to one ratio. And I yeah, think that's kind of just fair to say that it probably was somewhere in right. the one to one ratio. And when we look at the fats on the grass fed meat on ours in particular, 
That's exactly what we saw. It was one to one. So literally what could be a more perfect ratio for the human body. So I don't, I'm not scared of fat when I eat my meat. In fact, I eat all the fat with it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's part of a healthy diet, but it's got criticized for so many years as to being not heart healthy. And I think that's part of this other thing that people don't know about. Yeah. It's not something to do with the high omega-6 ratios in our food today. So that's my kind of personal belief, but. Oh yeah, for sure. I think there's a lot of data starting to show that now. Yeah. Omega-6 is, if you're not familiar with this is, is omega-6s are like slightly inflammatory. All foods have omega-6 and omega-3, right? It's about the ratio. So omega-6 is important. We need a little bit of inflammatory triggers in our body to help things happen. And omega-3s are like the healing side of that. So when you have this like crazy high, um, like I think the, the last time I read this, it was like the average, they a- estimate that the average American eats about like a 25 to one now yes. because of the, uh, the highly processed, yes. what should be one to one is one to one is about 25 to one. 25 to and, one that, and that's with all the plants and processed foods too, not just meats, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's the standard American diet, it's it's, the soybean it, oil, the corn oil. Yeah. Everything that's fried in, all your right. French fries are fried in exactly. your vegetable oils skew you really high towards this, this really high ratio. Right. Even your crackers, your chips, like all yes, of that stuff. Everything's high. in it. You find soybean oil, seed oils in right. everything you eat. Everything. everything. And they will tend to have that higher, especially the more they're processed. So it's like, it's more that. And so when you come into this one-to-one, like it, it, to me, that is one of the most healthy, most balanced profiles. I, I loved seeing that on your report. Cause I was like, of course, <laughs> you know, yeah. like it didn't surprise me at all yeah. because it's like, you're so integrated with nature. That's what's going to be produced is like a healthy balance right. for the animal and for the human, you know? Yeah. And so yeah. it was cool that you guys got that done. And yeah, I definitely yeah. don't stress and, about the and then, healthy fats and your meat. <laughs> yeah. And so the one downside on um, pork and chicken is that these animals are fed a lot of starches. They, they, there's no other way to grow them, even though they're grown on pasture, they're yeah. still supplemented because, yeah. you know, that they have to have this to grow at all on pasture. They're, they're not like a beef cattle that can eat, you know, mm-hmm. huge volumes of grass and, and get protein on it. So, um, pork and chicken are always fed so no matter where you get it from. I don't care. Organic, whatever mm-hmm. pasture raised, it's all fed some additional starches. And so, a lot of people criticize that because they're fed these high corn and soy diets, which contribute to that higher mm-hmm. omega-6 to omega-3 ratio. So we've been working with our farmer network to get rid of all corn and soy wow. in our pastured chicken mm-hmm. and our pork. And awesome. I'm happy to say on the pork that's fixing to come out uh, towards the end of the month, we wow. have the first time ever a corn and soy free fed pork. So wow. that's going to improve that ratio. And then on our pasture chicken, mm. they are not fed any corn and soy for the majority of their life. They're only fed corn and for the first week as, as hatchlings, but then we've rid of that. We're going to try to rid all of it eventually. So mm. we're really focused on this. Yeah. Ratio. I'm like it's a, really important to me. Yeah. I'm like, we of course you are. The I know we're... Possible. So we're trying hard and it is extremely difficult to do. I found to eliminate seed oils from everything or corn and soy. It's been a huge challenge, but we're, we're getting to that. We're very close to getting there on all of our products. Very cool. I'm like, of, of course, cause I know the energy you're coming from. And I, yeah. it's this, uh, I've been like reading some Buddhist type books lately. And like, I, I think one of the teachings from Buddha is like right action. And what he means by that, it's just like, it does it feel right. If it doesn't feel right, right. like that kind of like when it's it's like, oh, I don't like the energy of that. It's like, it's like when I, you know, to me going and buying like Tide laundry detergent, I can't do it, man. I yeah. can't do it. It's just, yeah. I know what it does to the planet. I know what it does to people. I can't do that. It just yeah. doesn't feel like right action. And that, that's what I'm hearing with you is like, you're feeling that you're like, I know this is going to be hard and I know like, it's not gonna be easy, but like, I got to kind of like work on that one because there's something it about is. that that just doesn't feel right. You know? So I love, and I love that you're sharing that it's, it's a process, you know, and that there's a lesson in that and like personal growth and like being kind, it's just like working on it. You know, I feel that. And it, it just gently, yeah. like gently working toward a solution on that. Cause I'm, I'm noticing that, that, that needs some attention there, you know? So it's yes. super cool that yeah. you guys are yeah, yeah. doing that and yeah. process yeah. of that. 
Um, yeah. and, and on that note, we just released, like we, we wanted to kind of provide um, in, in the condiment section, everything is loaded with corn, soybean oil and right. all these things. So, you know, it's so important to us that we developed our own line of sauces that would be healthier. So we yeah. created this happy prairie line of sauces that to pair with our meat. So that are um, no seed oils, no soy, no corn oil. So, so that's awesome. just how important it is to us. Okay. Let's, let's, let's highlight a little bit, because if you guys haven't been over to the, their website, repprovisions.com, like you're in for a treat. Cause you have all these different kits and boxes. Can you kind of share what you guys have created? It's not just like you go buy meat, like it, there's it's a little more fun than that. Can you share some of the things you guys have put together? Yeah, we, we've tried to create um, these curated boxes. So you don't have to think about what, what you want. It'll come in one box um, and it helps us kind of move product more efficiently. But we also created you know, these recipe kits, like you mentioned, soup and stew kits, um, mm -hmm. you know, taco kit, chicken wing kits, that, yeah. you know, different things that you can create uh, just one meal with kind of pretty much everything, maybe a few items you want to get from your grocery store, right. but um, it's all, you know, frozen so you can cook it when you need to. Yeah. Um, but we want to try to create, and also broth, like we created kits where you can make your own broth. We love broth. And we make our that. own broth, yeah. but we also sell kits where you can make it at home mm -hmm. and we send you the spices and the bones and everything to do That's that. This is one of the healthiest so things you can have is bone broth. And so we love these types of kits to get people, you know, cooking, like don't, you know, make it easier. Yes. Nobody likes to cook anymore. It seems like, but if we can make it easy enough and, and make it, you know, that healthy, like it's, it's yeah. hard to deny that. So we wanted to kind of create these systems where it makes it easier for moms or parents to cook for their kids yeah. as well, you know, yeah. And then delicious it, meals. yeah. And, and in case you guys didn't, of course, everything in them is like super high quality. There's no crap stuff mixed in there. If you're going to no. add seasonings, they're going to be good. You know, like you yeah, guys, that's care. our context, you know, right. I mean, that's just how we <laughs> try to live. I, I mean, I'm not saying we're perfect, but man, we, we try really hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. I, you know, it's so funny. I do my little meditations. I always check in on my body. I broke a rib like a week and a half ago oh, no. and I, and I had this, it was like, I just, boom, like right. Meditation was like, you need to make some bone broth, like let the bones like not, don't just buy it. You need to drop some bones. <laughs> like it was just yeah. this like real quick, like I was like, got it. So anyway, I thank yeah. you for saying that. I definitely yeah, order that. Yeah. And that's so great. Cause you know, you're getting like the highest quality animals for your bone broth that you're making. Yes. So yes. yeah, cool. Yes. And the seasonings mix is really nice. Cause most, I mean, me too. I'm like, I don't know what I would put in there. <laughs> so. I know. Yeah. That's a struggle people have. They don't know what do you put with it. And they're scared yeah. to, to experiment. So we did all of the experimenting for you. And yeah. And that's awesome. Some local chefs to help us develop it. Mm, so awesome. Well, Eric, thank you for taking the time. I know you're busy running a very, very busy heart led, you know, organization over there. So thank you for th taking the time out and sharing with us. Um, yes. Go check out their site, please, guys. It's repprovisions.com. It, I even like, I feel bad giving you guys a coupon code because I'm like, no, like just pick, go pay full price. So I'll leave it up to you. you go pay full price or you can use Coach Tara yeah, <laughs> a use coupon Coach code Tara. if that helps you, you know, make yeah. the choice. So yes. um, yeah, thank you again, Eric. So appreciate the work you're doing. You appreciate you so much, Tara. Yes. Thank you for all your support over the years. It's been fabulous to have folks like you on our side. Thank That's you. how we change the food system. Yeah, we care. We appreciate you. We see you. It's like we want to. We want to support you. <laughs> so yeah. thanks. Well, thank you.